It's the final word daily with Adam Collins and Jeff Lemon for Advanced Hair Studio, the world leaders in hair restoration. On location here in Gaul in Sri Lanka where we've seen an extraordinary expression of democratic freedoms here today, which outstrips everything we saw on the cricket field today. A monumental day potentially in the history of this great country. Uh, Jeff, let's do the cricket first and come back to the broader picture second. 30 seconds, tell us all about it. Australia wrapped up pretty quickly in the morning. Alex Carey reverse swept, got caught in the deep and the tail fell away from there. Steve Smith, 145, not out without a lot of support. Uh, that meant they were 364. An early wicket with Patam Nasanka caught in the gully and then a big partnership between Dimut Karuna Ratna and uh, Kusal Mendes. The biggest partnership for the second wicket for Sri Lanka against Australia. Uh, Angelo Matthews came in when Karuna Ratna was out late in the day and they're two for 184, I reckon, something That's like it. that. Yeah. Uh, two for 184, so they're over halfway to Australia's tally of 364. Let's just leave the cricket for a moment. So. What you're hearing behind us isn't guns, by the way. It's the poppers that have been let off all day Fireworks. in the protest behind us. Um, there was two parts of what happened here today. There was the slow growing of support around the streets. We were out there talking to people before play started. They were denied the chance to travel to Colombo. They shut down all public transport between Gaul and Colombo to deny the public the chance to be part of the national protest. So they did one of their own here in Gaul. It was inspirational. They were gathering families, young and old, uh, people from across the community. And they started here in the street. They did a lap of the ground and they went back and effectively retook Gaul Fort, which was taken away from them. Public land, Jeff, that they were denied access to on the third day of the first test match and yesterday on the spurious argument that it was getting in the way of Australian batsmen behind the bowler's arm. We might come back to behind the bowler's arm stuff later, by the way, in the Hall of Fame. But they went up there, and within a quarter of an hour, the fort was the people's again. And a couple of hours on from that, they were having a pool party in the president's pool, uh, which also is something that we took great enjoyment from. Um, Jeff, your thoughts? Uh, an extraordinary day. So just down to our right, about 100 metres that way, is the, the main train station in Gaul. This is the central part of Gaul, the, the post office, the churches, the town hall, the central buildings are all around here. So people haven't come to the cricket ground to protest, it's that the cricket ground happens to be in the centre of the city. Yep. Thousands of people who came to take the trains in the morning to Colombo found the trains have been cancelled and so this is where they've ended up. The crowd you see behind us now is probably about a half or a third of what it was earlier. Oh, if that, yeah. I mean, it, it, and it's still a massive crowd here. They're still making a lot of noise, and they have been doing so all day in a in a very upbeat and, and increasingly joyful way. And then in Colombo, the scenes you talked about, where the the the, the sort of uh, the, the, the symbolic presidential palace, you know, the notional residence, has been. Uh, overtaken by the protests by the people and the president's nowhere to be seen. So an extraordinary day in Sri Lankan history. Yeah, worth noting it's been a, a dignified protest here today. No violence. Yeah, there's an anger. There's a, there's a sharpness to the dialogue behind us here, but never at any stage they threaten to disrupt the game or to, to storm the barricades here. Not that there are barricades as such, but it was all about being heard and being seen. And they were only up on the fort for half an hour. It wasn't about disrupting the test match. It was about making sure that they were able to discharge their democratic rights and their freedoms in this country, which had been precluded here at the cricket ground on the third day of the first test. And then yesterday when nobody was able to go up on the fort. And we spoke about that a little bit yesterday. But the other inspirational thing is that it was kind of organic. I mean, there were only about 100, 200 people in front of us here before play. They were mostly up at the train station. And even that, we're talking maybe two or 300 people at most, maybe a thousand. By lunchtime, there were thousands and thousands of people here on the street, wall to wall human beings, all singing and chanting. They broke off into a couple of separate protests at one stage and they have not stopped since. They have been going flat knacker for five hours and they will go all night because they are not going to be stopped. They are not going to be suppressed any longer. The team buses are uh, manoeuvring below us here. They'll be taken out um, under an escort, but we doubt there'll be any trouble with the teams leaving the ground. No, that, no, none that, of that. That hasn't been the, the nature of this protest. So if we take it back to the field of play, uh, I mean, Steve Smith, what was he, 109 overnight? 
that's that's the number in my head. It might yeah, have been. Yeah, he a bit was one hundred and nine. That. That's right. Made one hundred and forty-five by the time he was said and done. Yeah, and and didn't really get the opportunity to hit out with the tail. The bowling was tight. It was hard to time aggressive shots on this pitch. Couldn't really take on the bowling. He trusted his tail end partners. You know, up until the number eleven came out, that didn't come off today. Stark, Cummins, Lyon, all out pretty cheaply. And uh, what I left out in the 30-second summary, six wickets on debut for Prabhat Jayasuriya, the left-arm spinner. Those are the second-best debut figures for any Sri Lankan bowler. Um, he ended up with six for just over 100. And after an early spell of nine or ten overs where he bowled poorly on the first day, he came back after that and effectively took six for 60 and, and bowled tremendously. Yeah, he got plenty of overspin on the ball, was able to generate enough side spin in contrast to Ramesh Mendes, who struggled with penetration today. And Jaya Surya was the reason why Sri Lanka took five for 66 in that first session. Before, to, before play today on radio, we were saying, well, if they can bowl Australia out in the session, they'll have done well here. They're back in the game. In the end, 3-6-4 was a great result from where Australia were overnight for the home side. And then they took advantage of what's been fairly generous batting conditions. There's been no demons in this pitch. I wouldn't call it a flatty. Balls are still going um, for the spinners. But, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fair test pitch, nothing much doing. And we saw what they were able to do when two set men got going. Kusal Mendes, Jeff, who we've seen struggle for the last six years for the most part. Seven test tons, but that breakthrough 100 against Australia at Candy, the 176, where he was player of the match in 2016. I think when you left that tour, you thought he'd go on to be a world beater. I wasn't on that tour until later yeah. in the series. And then it's just not clicked for him. But he finishes tonight on 84, not out. He had Karuna Rutna for company, who made 86 the captain, robbed of a first century against Australia. Remembering yep. that Karuna Rutna's average against Australia before today was 18. So maybe a point to prove for the skipper. And yeah, they put on 152, as you mentioned, the biggest partnership for the second wicket in Test cricket for Sri Lanka against Australia. They've laid a foundation. They're more than halfway there, uh, and they're in a good position to press home that advantage tomorrow. And, and what they did, those two in particular, was just patient accumulation. They didn't rush, especially Kusal Mendes was going at a strike rate of about 30 uh, through the first 60 or 80 balls that he faced. They collected singles. They didn't over-attack. There were occasional moments. Karuna Ratna came down the pitch a couple of times to hit boundaries. But for the most part, they waited for the bowling to come to them. They picked it off into the gaps. And the Australians had to try everything. They switched ends for Nathan Lyon and Mitchell Swepson. Yep. They had them bowling against the conventional wisdom as to where the breeze should be for an off spinner and a leg spinner. That didn't work. They had Cummins bowl from both ends, Stark bowled from both ends, Cameron Green bowled three overs. And they couldn't get any reverse swing. They just couldn't make anything happen. And so after making Australia go through all of the iterations and possibilities, Sri Lanka came through it, uh, came through the other side with a decent sort of total put together. They haven't been scoring quickly, so they haven't really put pressure on the Australians. But Gee, we've got, uh, a, we've got a bloke behind us here. Brat's pointing it out. He's climbed all the way up the pole. Goodness me, I'm not sure if you can see that. I think you can. Yeah, there he is. He's, uh, yeah. he's gone all the way up and down again. Goodness me. Well, that's, uh, that's what the Sri Lankan people are trying to do today, ascend a, a difficult summit. So a, a, day where we, a day where we were, were impressed yeah. by Sri Lankan resilience in a number of ways. Yeah, and there were a couple of wickets for Australia. A screamer from Cameron Green in the gully. I don't know how many times we've said that in his brief test career. From the bowling of Stark to get rid of Nasanka for six. And then Swepson, to his credit, swung around, changed ends, and I think second ball back into the attack. Uh, he had Karuna Ratna leg before wicket. Uh, playing down the wrong line. He reviewed. He shouldn't have reviewed the captain on that one. I think it was in hope more than expectation. Indeed, he was all the way right. off, the, off the ground before such time that they went through the formal DRS process. But only the two wickets. Uh, and you go back to the start of the day, and really Australia didn't take advantage of the position they were in. They weren't able to keep the pressure on that they had yesterday. Alex Carey was out relatively early on in the piece, a partnership that ended up being worth 77 with Stephen Smith. He was out for 28 but then it was single digits for the rest. Stark made one, Cummins made five, Lyon made five, and Swepson made three. Maybe they could have done with Glenn Maxwell. I mean, obviously, as the game's played out, it's not been a Bunsen, so the talk of using sure. him as a third spinner's um, uh, negated to an extent. Yeah. But, you know, Look, having some pressure at number eight would have been handy. Doubt he would have taken five for today, but he might have made 50 today, and it yeah. would have been a handy yeah. contribution at that point. For Smith to have someone to go with him as well um, and to help him build, because he looked so well set. I mean, Smith... We said he didn't give a chance yesterday. He continued not giving a chance today. He was 
He was so resolute, so solid, um, and seemed to have that legendary concentration back and working. Yeah, he's now got a 1-4-5 in chess cricket, a 1-4-4, a 1-4-3, a 1-4-2, and a 1-4-1. So he's made it to 150 on eight occasions, but made it to the 140s on 14 occasions. The nervous or like 140s, that. you know, that big <laughs> milestone, that big 150, oh, just looms <laughs> in the imagination. You see a lot of players lose it in the 140s. Oh, they think about the storied escapades of people in decades past, oh, and they think, if only that could be me saluting the crowd on 150. Yes, that one time Mark Waugh got there, for example. Yeah, we have yeah. many, many instances of getting between about 120 and 150. Uh, Jeff, I think, uh, given the nature of the show, we'll cut straight to the Final Word Hall of Fame. This is the Final Word Hall of Fame for the Advanced Hair Studio, the world leaders in hair restoration. Uh, you'll see the website running across the bottom of the screen, advancedhairstudio.com forward slash final word. Get your 15% discount. Uh, if you've got great hair, don't worry about it. If you don't, maybe you should go there, have hair like Jeff. It can build confidence. It can add to your confidence, yep. If you, yep. as we've talked about before. I know if I started losing my hair, um, it wouldn't take long for me to jump on the advancedhair.com forward slash final word and benefit from the 15% that's being offered at the moment. Jump on the website where we have our own private landing page, put in your details and you are through. That's all you need to do. That is all you need to do. It's all you need to know. Uh, Hall of Fame, I mean, my Hall of Fame is just everybody who's been <laughs> out here today. That just the very pointed nature of going back up onto the fort. I thought that yeah. in the, what was it, late in the first session or was it early in the second session of the day where everybody came through the, uh, through the tunnel into the fort and, and they said there aren't enough police officers that you can station there. The police were diverting people away during the first test. It wasn't going to happen after that. It was a lovely moment to narrate seeing people walk back through the tunnel uh, and then back through the fort entirely. But as we see, it just continues here. Sri Lankan flags waving everywhere. So I'm slightly distracted. This is just a, a marvellous day to be witness to. But yeah, when they got back on the fort, um, the chanting was so loud. Of course, TV couldn't cut to the pictures, but on radio, we were able to hopefully do a suitable job of painting the picture and a lot of photos on social media as well. And then later in the day, I mentioned the pool, the Sri Lankan Dimit Karuna Ratna pool party. Uh, the Sri Lankan captain who we spent so much time talking about at the 2019 World Cup way back when. He, he won our he won our bracket, didn't he? Yes. He won the he won the Hall of Fame bracket for insisting on a pool for the Sri Lankan team as captain during that tournament. Well, uh, he's after been which out. they immediately started winning. As soon as they got a hotel with a pool, knocked off England, the eventual winners, yeah, did indeed. and went on a winning spree. And Karuna Ratna has been coming to these protest marches as well. So he's part of what's going on today. A number of Sri Lankan cricketers are, including the former great Kumar Sangakkara. But yes, it felt fitting that they were celebrating in the in the presidential pool today while Karuna Ratna was passing 50 against Australia and putting in uh, a wonderful effort with the blade as the opening bat. Uh, and I can't but not put you in the Hall of Fame for a second day in a row. You talk about bowlers switching ends. Mitchell Stark, late in the day, uh, yep. came back from the pavilion end. Yep. And unbeknownst to us, we've been standing up on commentary a little bit in our excellent commentary box in the... Uh, it's called the presidential box. It may not be called that for much longer. Um, it's probably the uh, Sri Lankan cricket president box rather than the president of the country. Anyway, I digress. And we didn't know that at a certain time of the day that you can see into our commentary box and thus Jeff was uh, a distraction to the batters and what? kind of the rest is history. You ended up on telly. I I would just say this. I like to stand up when I do commentary. I feel like I have more energy that way. Like I'm, I'm, I'm speaking more, you know, with a bit more oomph. So that's what I've been doing that for the whole test match. The whole test series. Yep, me too. Hasn't been a problem. Um, and you talk about players being distracted by things that are nowhere near the sight screen. We're like a level up above the sight screen. I've been there all day with Smith and Labuschagne, no problems, no problems at all. And just with the angle of Mitchell Stark, suddenly Angelo Matthews decides, I don't like that guy standing up about 10 metres above the sight screen who I can now see through a window. And so they've held up play and they're gesticulating and pointing and Mitchell Stark's pointing up there and I'm like, oh, there's obviously someone down this end who's <laughs> annoying them. And I'm like, it looks like he's pointing at me. And I was saying this on air. I'm like, he can't be pointing at me. There's no way he could be pointing at me. I'm inside. There's a window. There'll be reflections. And I thought, just for an experiment, I'm going to sit down and see what happens. 
So I did, and he went, finally, and then turned around and bowled. And I was like, oh, shit. And David Warner played his role as well. Yeah, Warner yelling into the stump mic, broadcast, tell Jeff Lemon in the yellow shirt to sit down. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, David Warner in the stump mics. It was Johnny Besto in 2017 that he was going out. That was, it was Cameron Bancroft, wasn't it, with all the... Uh, uh, who, who could the, remember? The headbutting and all of that stuff. Um, it, was, it, was, it was me today. Fair enough. All I would say is, Lucky, you've got a great head of hair because if you ain't got the locks, you ain't on the box, and Jeff does have the locks. And today... He was on the box. The Final Word Hall of Fame for advancedhairstudio.com forward slash final word. Get your 15% discount. They've been in operation for more than 30 years. They've helped more than a million people and they've got a 100% guarantee on the work that they do. Uh, that will be it on an eventful day here in Sri Lanka. Yes, at Gaul Stadium, but across the country. If you haven't seen them yet, the pictures from Colombo are quite astonishing as they have been here at Gaul. We'll sign off from here. We'll do it all again tomorrow. Australia are ahead in the game still, but Sri Lanka going nicely at 2 for 184. This has been the Final Word Daily. Adam Collins, Jeff Lemon. See you tomorrow. See ya.